Faye Fernandez and I'm an art teacher. Visit my website at pattyfernandezartist.com. Okay, let's draw. Today's project is we're going to draw different climate change weather conditions. The first one we're going to start with today is drought. D R O U G H T. And drought is when it's really, really hot and really, really dry. I'm going to take three fingers at the bottom and right about here I'm going to put a dot. And from that dot going to the left, going from the left to the right, I'm just going to draw a slightly wavy line over and stop. And inside this space, I'm going to draw some wavy lines that's supposed to represent dried out riverbeds, creeks, and just the general land with no water. Because that's what a drought is. It's no water. So this is all dry parched land. Then I come right above and I put little tiny straight lines all the way across. Because what happens in a drought is, is that the plants do grow, but they don't grow very big and they're not very green. But there is some, some growth, but sometimes that works against you, which we'll see in just a minute. Okay, right about here, midpoint, I'm going to put a dot. And from that dot, I'm going to draw a straight line, curve line down, straight line, curve line down straight line, curve line down, off the page. These are my foothills and they also are covered with little straight lines all the way across the tops, down the sides, on the bottoms and again these little straight lines represent that there is some growth, plant growth, but it's very very dry. And it covers the mountain, the foothills, it covers the um, inside part of the space. So right here we're going to draw a slightly wavy line, slightly wavy line, slightly wavy line. And we're going to put those little straight lines again. Now, when you look at the foothills, you see that they are covered with this underbrush which is layers and layers of dried grasses that are just still there waiting to catch on fire. So I'm going to write underbrush so that we remember that this is dried plants and then I'm going to write the words dry, dry, and dry. Because basically what we're setting up right here is um, the elements you would need for a firestorm. Right above, I'm just going to draw a pretty good size sun. Now when you're in a drought, that sun is hot. So we're going to put some curve lines on the opposite side so that you can see it is really hot. Now we come down to our foothills and we're going to draw straight diagonal up, zigzag, zigzag down, straight diagonal up, zigzag, zigzag down, straight diagonal up, zigzag, zigzag down, straight diagonal up, zigzag, zigzag down. These is uh, representing my fire storm. See what happens is it gets so dry from the drought and no water and the plants, the underbrush is so dry that it only takes the beginning of a fire. So now I'm putting some curve line, curve lines. This is going to be my smoke. Curve line, curve line, curve line. Okay. So we have our drought. We have our firestorm. We have our underbrush. It's dry, dry, dry. Now this is also part of climate change because um, it is hotter now than it's ever been. 
And I can attest to that because I'm in California. All right, let's see how we're going to color this in. Okay, I went through my crayon bag again, hold on to those crayons, and I found a couple of different browns, which is important because all of this area is different colors of browns. If you don't have different colors of brown, you can use your brown crayon and just use it hard, uh, dark and light. This color is tan. So I'm going to have that represent my river bed or my dried land, lake beds, all of this is dry. Then I came up and I wanted to make there a difference between my foothills because that's a different kind of dry, but it also is brown. So I took a regular brown and colored this area in. Now you don't want to color so dark that you can't see your letters. Your, your words. So keep this so that you can still see what you wrote. Then I got my light green and because I wanted it to look like there are plants, it's not totally dead, there are plants, I'd use my light green, yellow green on all of my little straight lines to represent my underbrush even up here in my firestorm. So go ahead, I know it's a lot, but do all these little straight lines with your light green. Okay, now we start the firestorm. I started out with my red orange and I just mimicked the lines that I already drew. And because it's a fire and it's a national, uh, natural occurrence, there is no right or wrong way of uh, drawing. Then I came in with my red and I did some red on the outside part. I did some red on the inside part. Again, this is up to you how you want to color your storm, your fire storm. All the way across. Then I did my sun. So I did that yellow. But if you've ever been, oh and I did my little heat marks also sweltering heat. Now if you've ever been around a fire and I've been by quite a few because where we live catches on fire a lot you get these big massive black gray skies. So I'm taking a black and I'm just doing some loop-de-loops following these little curved lines kind of showing a little bit of motion. Then I come in with my gray and I fill in some of the other spaces because it's a common, that's what they always tell you, don't go out in the smoke if you've got asthma or if you're an older person because it's not just the fire that can get you, so can the air. So I fill that in with gray. But what's really weird is that it's still a blue sky. So every once in a while I went ahead and I took my blue green and I just added some little things of color. Okay? All right, here's our drought with a firestorm. And this is all because of climate change. Okay, let's see what this looks like all colored in. Okay, here's my drought with my firestorm all colored in. They say these are caused by heat waves and cyclical climate changes like El Nino. But what's really upsetting is four out of five of these wildfires are caused by people. Okay, bye-bye.